Welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast with business and life success coach, Prodney Leitner. With that, I wanted to bring you a special edition of the Ripple Effect, which is actually the second of a double header with uh, Prodna Leitner, who is really the best in the business in terms of a life and business success coach. And we just were on the Ripple Effect where she talked about the emphasis on health and how she can help individuals improve their health and we're going to focus on the business components today on the ripple effect or pardon me on quantum leap but there's really such a connection between both our personal and professional that it's almost indistinguishable in in a number of ways and and when you look at mindset so i would like to have broaden address that at some point we will talk about that but i did want to um, first introduce my co-host Corey Knott who's also a top business coach and I think um, Corey focuses a lot on kind of the nuts and bolts of businesses of how to get your business um, off the ground and, and succeeding Prodna is a more a bit more conceptual on the mindset although I, I'd like to get their thoughts about um, you know what their sp- 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 specific emphasis is so Corey with that could you just introduce yourself and let us know how you approach the uh, field of business coaching sure uh, Corey not here and I am a co-owner of take wing coaching along with my wife and we um, our main product is a platform called lift which stands for learning inspiration freedom and transformation and our goal is to provide a community for business owners where you know they have access to learning putting together uh, self-directed workshops We provide some live workshops. We also do some brainstorming and some group coaching all at a very affordable rate. Um, It also offers some networking and and just, you know, open feedback in a community forum. And then um, as a business coach, I also sometimes will work with uh, people one-to-one. We especially like to work with partnerships um, because we have a, a, a strong background in business relationships as well as of course being a partnership ourselves. And uh, I, I do, a, I don't do a great deal, I would say, of deep mindset work. Um, I'm very much on purpose and vision. So we, we start with that and use that as a tool to kind of suss out a person's, um, you know, where they're looking forward to. Uh, if there's deeper issues get in the way, then, you know, we might refer them to some, some other help. Uh, but I am also a certified uh, master practitioner in NLP. And uh, just recently finished a program called Mind Sonar, where we use an assessment tool to determine somebody's uh, particular thinking in a context. So if we look at the context, say, of being at work, we can see some measurements using meta programs to see exactly how they think in that environment and help them improve those skills. Great, thank you. And how I kind of look at it too is that Pradna really got me on the right path with my mindset, which almost has to start first. And then I was able to get a lot out of Corey's program flight plan where before I even met Prod and I probably wouldn't even looked at having a business coach like Corey. So you two have probably been the most influential in terms of my own business success. So it's great to have this as kind of a, almost a mini mastermind session here. And, um, I, with that, I wanted to introduce Pradna and let her tell us a bit about, uh, her professional story, her personal story and how she can, help business owners um, generate a quantum leap. Yeah. Well, thank you very much to David and Corey. It's an absolute pleasure to be able to be here and share my message with your audience. Um, To begin with, I just want to say that Corey and I really seem very complimentary. And momentarily, as I walk you through, uh, what is it that I help business owners with? I think that um, uh, confluence will become apparent. So um, my name is Pradnya Leitner, and I'm a mindset-based business and a personal success coach. Now, my story, I know we only have half an hour, so I'll give you the shorter version of it. Um, Growing up for me was on three different continents, and it was just a beautiful experience. Um, I went to school um, and studied biomedical engineering. And at the time, I thought that I would be a pre-med student, but I realized that, no, that's not what I'm going to do. So then I started my career in the corporate world with um, IBM and Salesforce. And um, it was a beautiful journey. However, somewhere around seventh year mark, I started realizing 
and coming to conclusion with the fact that there is a difference, again, with all due politeness, uh, politeness that there is a difference between achievement and fulfillment. And I, my resume looked stellar, uh, but there was a gaping hole in my heart. And I had a deep-rooted quest to live a life of meaning and significance, and as Corey so rightfully referred to, vision and purpose. And so, seek and you shall find is a good statement, right? In scriptures, it got me started on this path. And I discovered that I'm really passionate about the work that I do now. And in my opinion, it matters who you learn from. So I learned what I share with people now um, from two of the best mentors in the world, Bob Proffer and Sandy Gallagher. And so everything that I'm gonna share with you today is not something that I pulled out of a thin air, but these are the success principles that are practiced across the board, whether somebody is a newbie and just starting the business who's successful versus somebody who is extremely successful financially and otherwise in the business and is getting to that yet another next level of quantum leap. Um, so that's really about what I do and a bit of my story. Great, thank you. And I think uh, the key thing that you've shown me is that really success is a process and that you have to learn that process and continue to practice that process to be successful. And uh, if you do, you're going to achieve the results that you want. If you don't, you're going to continue to get what you've always gotten that maybe you're fine with, maybe you're not. In my case, I wasn't fine with it, and I wanted something more, and you've really helped me unlock that. Could you describe some of the results that you've seen from the people that you've coached and worked with in terms of, them following the process and the types of results that they've gotten compared to the results that they were previously getting? Yes, uh, but with one disclaimer, I consider myself as a conduit. I'm simply holding the space and helping you understand you. And then when you apply that, what's within you is what you're bringing to the surface. So more power to all my clients who are producing their results. Um, and again, I always say that there is so much psychic income in this profession, and I know Corey will nod his head too, because when we know we're able to shift and do better, right? And Solomon says, in all of your getting, get understanding, and this is self-understanding. So when you're able to cultivate that in people, then they not only aspire to, but manage to have a quantum leap. So my clients, they come from all different walks of life, different levels of seniority, and um, they have attained results such as multiplying their business revenue, and yes, multiplying, multiplying their personal income um, to winning ju jury trials um, that were in the multi-millions. They have um, really had um, success on the personal level as well. I mean, but... On the professional side, they have gone on to win trophies for bodybuilding championship at the national level. Um, the list just goes on. And that is because, you know, if I look at you, David, right, it's not um, different Davids that are producing results in different aspects of David's life. It's not like there's father David, and then there's husband David, and then there's professional David, and then there's personal David. It's just David and David's his name, right? But it's on the internal plane when he grows, let's say David grows with the professional goal, that growth has to percolate in all aspects of his life. And that's what my clients have experienced. So increase in self-confidence that's really authentically grounded in their understanding of who they are, um, just better relationships, calmness, peace of mind. So all of these have been effects of them going after their goal and being in the pursuit of becoming the person that they have to become to attain that goal. Great, thank you. And the name of the show is called Quantum Leap, and you know, I I wouldn't even have this show if if I didn't learn this concept from you. Here, I've learned it from your mentors, and um, really, I see that Quantum Leap starts with belief. You have to believe in it, and this is such a critical thing that you teach. Um, I just wanted to ask you to 
elaborate on this concept of quantum leap and uh, how you came to the conclusion that it's possible and um, one, how people can generate their own quantum leap? Yeah, that's a powerful question. Um, with your permission, guys, I would like to preface it and really give some food for thought or pardon me, uh, uh, food for thought for our audience to get them to really open up their mind, okay? So even before I can answer that question, um, let me ask you to just think. And when I say think, guys, again, with all due politeness, there is a fundamental difference between mental habitual chatter that keeps us stagnated and stuck versus disciplined, accurate thinking that takes us to our goal. Corey was just at the beginning was referring to how they pay attention to thoughts, right? So I want you to really think, okay? Would you ever drive a fancy high-end car um, without ever knowing how to drive? Would you get into a high-end car in the driver's seat and drive that car? No. Would you operate a complex, um, sophisticated machine without ever understanding how to operate it, without ever looking at its instruction manual? No, you won't, right? But when it comes to operating us, the human beings that were born with so much potential, why is it that there is no human instruction manual? Really think. Now, again, this is not blaming anybody or finger pointing at society or parents or teacher. They gave us to the best of their abilities. Okay. But it is imperative that now, as we understand that our results are the reflection of us, that we begin to understand ourselves and get a hold of the instruction manual. But the challenge is when we went through our schooling system, right, whether it was elementary, middle school, um, high school, and then vocational training, we learned all about different courses, you know, mathematics, civics, history, geography, and then in vocational training, sales and marketing and operations and finance and everything in between. But was there ever any class, Corey, that they said, hey, Corey and Pradnya, you're just in elementary or you know, middle school. Let us sit you in this thinking class where we're gonna help you understand how powerful you are and who you are, what mind is, which is not your brain, right? What is the relationship of your mind to your behavior, to your results? How do you live inside out? What is self-image and how does that control your results in life to the nth degree? They didn't say any of that. And again, it's not their fault. But you and I both know that now we ought to understand that if we're aspiring to make a quantum leap. You see what I'm saying? And this is all intuitively understood. Why do you think people say that when you stagnate, your business stagnates? When you grow, your business grows. If you want things to change, you have to change. If you want things to improve, you have to improve. But who is that you? And this is where it's worth mentioning for making a quantum leap, person has to understand that we're spiritual beings. We live in this physical body, mind's Indian looking, and we have an intellect. So depending on how we're using the intellectual factors or faculties to process ideas and create new beliefs is how we're going to impact our behaviors and actions and ultimately our results. You follow what I'm saying there? So yeah. um, that's what I would say. And then I'll give you one example and then let's delve into the quantum leap aspect of the equation, okay? So two entrepreneurs, folks, uh, serving similar sort of clients in the similar industry, um, both having gone through similar sort of enablement, um, both are operating in the same industry. Why does their performance differ? Intuitively, somebody might say, well, entrepreneur A, who is blowing past his own expectations and revenue targets versus entrepreneur B, right? The person would say entrepreneur A has a better mindset, thinks differently, has better attitude, has more grit, has a different belief system, expects differently, different habits, right? But then Corey, if I were to shake your hand, I would feel your hand, right? I can sense it. 
But where is our thinking, mindset, beliefs, behaviors, habits, expectations, attitude, grit, self-confidence, self-esteem? So the gist of the story is that it's that invisible side of our personality to and through our behavior and you know, actions is sculpting the visible side of our results. So if somebody wants to make a quantum leap, they cannot just stay with strategy, tips, and tools. And why? Those are critical things. Guys, knowledge and strategies and tips and tools, they're extremely important. You know, and even knowledge gets a seat at the table, but knowledge is potential power. Strategies are potential power. It's your operating system. It's your fundamental way of executing against that knowledge that's going to dictate the return on investment we will get or not get. Does that kind of really help us preface it? So now coming to the quantum leap, um, anybody and everybody can make a quantum leap. Does not matter what background you come from, does not matter how many successes you have had or how many failures you have encountered. Why? Because our past really cannot dictate our future unless we let it. So first and foremost, anybody who wants to make a quantum leap, they have to have that strong desire. And that is where they have to understand how they can set the goal. And it can be the goal that they've done before because there is no growth and no inspiration, right? You bought a car, you want to buy a similar car or new model. There is no growth, no inspiration. It can be next type of goal, or we call it the type B goal, right? Where you're looking at your past and you're extrapolating how much farther you can go, right? But there's very little growth and but little inspiration. When going gets tough, when we're not emotionally involved in that sort of a goal, we throw in the towel. But when we really go after what we really, really want, that is when we come alive. So if entrepreneurs are willing to not just go for 10, 15, 20% of growth, but really know that they're at best operating at 10% of their potential, neuroscience has proven it. And spirituality says that there is infinite potential in you. Now, that doesn't mean that things will be served to us on a silver platter. We have to have the ability and desire to become that person, but we can. So if we can, and if we know that whether we think or we don't, either way we're right, then they have to make that decision to go after what they really want. And then they have to understand that what got them here won't take them there. And just knowing the goal doesn't suffice. Because only 13% of the people land up achieving their goals, guys. Why? Others also have their goals. And this is Harvard study. Why? Because it's not the absence of the goal. Of course, the first step is to set the goal. But once you set the goal, understanding that goal setting and goal achievement are two different processes. Goal setting is an intellectual process. You turn on your imagination and you're seeing what you're going to accomplish. Goal achievement is a lawful principle-based process where you are growing from within. Does that make sense? So they have to be able to close the knowing doing gap. And this is where without understanding the mind, they wouldn't even have the volition to move forward with it. So I hope that summarizes it for you that not only can everybody attain the quantum leap, but people ought to shoot for it because the real purpose of a goal is to grow. And when we're not growing, we're heading toward disintegration. Now it's not apparent overnight, but then that is when frustration trickles in. You know, our self-image, our self-confidence gets eroded and all of that percolates into our parenting, into our relationship life, into our fulfillment. So it's our duty, you know, it's our responsibility to grow. And when you're growing, you come alive. Thank you. And I just thought of an interesting anecdote. I, I think a lot of people were almost gifted this, you know, essentially like would be one of e Elon Musk's rockets that is capable of going to the moon. But a lot of people are just sitting on the landing pad, kind of playing around with the lights and not learning how to fly that rocket. But when you can fly that rocket, then that can generate the quantum leap. And similarly, maybe you were given kind of the, the, Hussein Bolt, you know, the, the ability to be the fastest man on the earth. But if, if you um, don't actually learn how to use that capability, you can't generate that quantum leap. And I think 
it's impressive once you begin to learn how to unlock that power and that's something that you helped me with so I'm you're grateful for that and we will be fleshing out this concept in greater detail and as a in terms of a quantum leap for example I think a 30 percent increase in sales a lot of people would call a quantum leap and I think you can even get there without without a lot of the mindset work but to get this exponential growth you know, I just really haven't seen a kind of a systematized system um, outside of getting at your mindset. And with that, I wanted to turn it over to Corey to um, if he has any comments. And I know you had a few questions, Corey. I was just going to say, can I make a quick comment on what David said there? Right. So you hit the nail right on the head, David. Um, if people understand what or rather once people begin to understand that their results in life are the reflection of them. So if they want to change the outside, they're going to have to change the inside because they're getting the results that they're getting, not because they want to, but that's what they know how to. But they also know somebody in their industry who's getting the results that they want to. Well, what is the difference? You know, where you said that, that quantum leap, not just 30%, but really going for multiplication. But this is where people ought to understand that just seeing the images of where we want to go in our conscious mind doesn't cut it because that conscious mind is responsible for only two to 4% of our results, perceptions, and behaviors. So the handbrake is applied at the subconscious pattern condition program mind that conditions us to operate on an autopilot 96 to 98% of the time. So imagine people are pressing on the gas, but the handbrake is applied at the subconscious below conscious level or you can call it unconscious level, uh, based on their beliefs and ideas, which you alluded to. So if they're willing to release that handbrake, then they can go much faster with what they have gotten without having to be exhausted. So I hope that makes sense. And Corey, thank you very much for allowing me to just chime in, but back to you, Corey. So how do you help people generate, people and businesses generate a quantum leap? Um, I'll give you a shorter version and an explanation of that. You feel comfortable flying because you understand that the aerodynamics forces are totally understood by the aviation industry and you're not going to fall, right? So people, once they begin to understand themselves, they're willing to set the goals that they really, really want, that they're really excited about attaining and they're equally scared about attaining because they do not know the how. But for that, that shift in belief has to happen first. So in most of the cases, when people attend any of my educational seminars or events, I explain things in detail over maybe a 60 to 90 minutes. And then that opens up their mind where they're not locked up by their limitations because our real limits in life are far beyond the artificial you know, limitations that we impose on ourselves. Now, I'm not suggesting anything and everything's possible. We can attain things only within the bounds of nature, but we can. So how do I help them? Here's a succinct answer. I help them set a goal that they previously thought unattainable because of their limitations, because of their beliefs. And once I get them to set that goal, then I help them transform their thinking, mindset, beliefs, behaviors, and habits so that they can accelerate to the next level in life and in business. And that is, Corey, because our behavior and action is a secondary cause of our results. The primary cause of our results is in our mind, is in our conditioning. And that's why people set New Year's resolution and goals, but in six to eight weeks, they're back to square one, you see? So unless and until you're making a shift at that subconscious condition pattern mind where your autopilot sits, it's difficult. So that's that. But the longer version of that would be, if you get that, is really I help people understand who they are, the power of their imagination, the power of their mental faculties. Once they know that, they set the clear mental image of where they're headed. And you know our reticular activation system thrives on that from a neuroscience perspective, right? Now, once they set the goal, I help them understand that if you keep on doing what you kept on doing, you will keep on getting what you kept on getting. 
And that's the definition of insanity. So you're going to have to do things differently. But what are the things that they're going to do differently? And that's where we look at something we call knowing doing gap. And I deliberately help them close that, you know, one or two habits or, or beliefs at a time. And then it's just really my practice is focused on helping them understand their mind and how it functions. Because once they understand that, then they become conscious competence. They're able to see the relation between what they were thinking, the beliefs they had, the actions they took, and the results they got. And they're able to literally reverse engineer and shift themselves to get to where they want to go. And then once, even when they understand that, then it's a matter of them understanding they cannot live from outside in. And I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody is, uh, one of my clients actually, um, an incredibly successful personal injury attorney in San Francisco, right? And um, multi-million dollar entrepreneur. And for a decade or so, he was stagnated at that level. People will consider him very successful, but because his thinking and beliefs and everything were governed and focused by the results that he was having and attaining. That's all that he could get to. So I really help people understand how they can use their mind to think and come from a place of where they want to be as opposed to where they're at. And then the biggest work, the biggest work bar none is that we do is on self image. Um, and, in a nutshell, we have two self images, one that we demonstrate and reveal to the world, but one that's deeply buried in our psyche. So how can I help these entrepreneurs shift that self internal self image that controls their results to the nth degree in life. And as they do that, then they're able to tackle fear and procrastination. Then they're able to match their actions with what they believe they can attain. Then they're able to have the attitude that they need to right? and really the self leadership, um, et cetera to take them to that next level that they can be at. So how would you say, what would, um, what can people do, especially in this environment to start improving on their lives now? You know, in 1929, Corey, um, our country witnessed one of the biggest recessions, right? Still, there were businessmen and people that were doing phenomenally well. So nobody is denying that we're in challenging times, but you don't have to give your power to it. You know, Viktor Frankl, the Viennese psychiatrist, when he was locked up in the concentration camp in Nazi Germany, he said that, you know, the last of human freedom is in our ability to choose our thoughts. So instead of listening to the media and news and making conclusions based on that, that I'm not able to grow this year, you know, only one third of the year is ahead of me. So I don't know how much farther I can go and all of those things. Why don't people even take the time right now to ask themselves, do I have a crystal clear goal that I'm going after? Because in absence of that, think about it. You know, a ship can leave a dock and it can go as effectively and as efficiently as it likes. But if it doesn't have the certain destination, it's going to get rocked in the middle of the ocean. So really set a goal that's meaningful to you that really caters to your big why, your purpose, as you so eloquently spoke to. And then understand, just setting the goal wouldn't suffice. You have to have the willingness to grow. But um, a quote that really comes to my mind, you know, um, Corey, it's by Robert Heinlein. It really summarizes it. In absence of a clearly defined goal, we become strangely loyal to the daily trivia of life until we become enslaved by it. So if we don't have a goal, the economy going on a tailspin is going to catch our attention. The fires going out are going to upset us. The corona demanding us that we innovate is going to make us think, ah, right? So you've got to really fall in love with that goal that you want to go after, what we call a worthy ideal. With that, uh, we're just about at time here. I did want to say I... would I thought of another metaphor. I really think that it's really kind of the alignment of our subconscious and our conscious and the goal setting that you really, you can help folks kind of align those stars, our internal um, ability to accomplish our goals. And then, um, you know, I really do appreciate how you focus on so much of this internal work and kind of div able to divide 
um, the practical business of kind of how you're going to set up your company, how you're going to market your your plan. Th these are things that Corey really specializes in. And then, but it starts with mindset. So you have to have both. And you've really helped me bring that mindset into alignment so I could use, work with somebody like Corey and his platform and his wife, Gail, um, the flight plan to really kind of generate that um, to really get takeoff in my business and that's what it really helped me do and I think you you put it so well earlier in terms of all those you know the maybe that somebody who sells insurance the exact same insurance products whereas one person successful one isn't they have all these the person who's successful has all these components in alignment that you were talking about yeah. You know, David, on that, um, you can wrap it up on this note, but think about it, the self-image, the profound implication of it, right? Um, let's say two people in the real estate industry going out there to pick up a listing, okay? Now, one person is a top dog. He knows that he's really good at it. Um, he's, he's skilled, uh, he's well-regarded in the community, whatnot. And he goes out, let's say you are the seller and, um, let's say Corey is a top dog real estate agent and I'm the rookie, okay? So Corey comes to meet you and Corey shakes your hand. He really communicates because he believes in himself, believes, okay? Believes. Now the script might be exactly identical to what Corey says and what I say, but Corey communicates that belief non-verbally, which you pick up on. So Corey's belief influenced your belief about him. Now your belief about him dictated your action toward him. You say, oh my goodness, this guy really knows what he's talking about. I get some, I really get this great feeling that we ought to work together. And you say, Corey, this is so great. Thank you for visiting me. I'd love to work with you. Now I knock on the door and let's say I'm a rookie real estate person. I'm thinking about all the bills that I have to take care of and how I have not succeeded in picking up the listings for the last few times and all of that. Now, my beliefs are suboptimal based on my beliefs, you know, or my beliefs dictate my actions. My actions are, I'm not necessarily looking in your eyes. I'm a little bit, you know, um, shaky and how I'm coming across. So you're energetically picking up on these things. Okay. And then based on my actions towards you, your beliefs about me are getting solidified. What you think of me. And that belief that you have are dictating your actions toward me. So you're saying, oh, nice gal, you know, but you're telling me, you know, so nice to meet you and thank you for coming to meet me and all of that. But I'll uh, keep you in mind and I'll call you if I need to connect with you. So for Corey, it acted the internal powerful self-image as a prosperity circle. For me, it acted as a doom fulfilling uh, prophecy. But it began with Corey's beliefs and my beliefs, you see? So entrepreneurs can really never outperform their self-image. So they have to really grow themselves in order to grow their business. Excellent. Well, thanks for sharing your insights. And um, I feel like both of you, I, Corey and Prod and I continue to learn so much from you in terms of, you know, how to be successful in business. And if somebody's looking at, you know, generating a quantum leap or how to do it. I think talking to both of you would be a place to start. And um, with that, I'll put the links to um, how to get in touch with, with you guys in the, uh, the chat box or the comments box. And thanks everyone for coming on and we'll wrap up this edition of the quantum leap podcast. Thank you, thank David. You thank you, Pradna. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>